Hey, welcome back. It is another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen. Now, today we're going to talk about VLOOKUP, but a really weird situation with VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, of course, I think is the most powerful function in all of Excel. We can use VLOOKUP to go grab, for example, a description uh, based on an SKU. So here we have a drop down where they choose an SKU, and then this VLOOKUP is grabbing the description from this table over here in L and M. Now, as you know, VLOOKUP requires the key field to be in the leftmost column, and then the information you're trying to get to the right of that. But sometimes the data is set up another way. And here, to get this price, the price is to the left of SKU. Now, the easiest solution, of course, is just move the price to the right. But sometimes you don't have control over this data. It might be someone else's data and it's set up wrong. How can we do that? Well, I'm going to show how to use two functions to replace the VLOOKUP. Boy, wouldn't it be great, note to Microsoft in case you're watching, to be able to say that we wanted the negative one column. Instead of saying we want the second column, say negative one, problem solved, life would be good. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So we have to use two other functions and these functions, I love this solution because both of these functions seem completely useless. You would never use either one of them. The first function is called match and if you understand VLOOKUP, you understand match. Say match a BR15-3 in this column of numbers, comma false or comma zero, just like VLOOKUP and that will find the exact match. But what it does when it finds it, it tells you what row it's on and not even the real row number, the relative row number. So for example, BR15-3 is right here. Well, that is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh item in that range of cells. I mean, what good is that? When would anyone ever know what item number a particular value is found? Uh, it's just insane. I originally read about match. I'm like, I'll never ever use this. But we're going to use that match result with another function called index. Index says, hey, we have a bunch of prices over here. And oh, by the way, we want the value that occurs at a certain row within that range and optionally a certain column. Now, we don't need to specify the column here because there's only one column. So check this out. We start out equal index of the prices in K2 to K29. And then the index function says, well, which row do you want within that? Well, I don't know what row I want, but I'm going to use another function called match. Go grab C2, go grab C2, figure out where C2 occurs in L2 to L29, and we want an exact match, comma false, and that will return the result. So BR15-3, sure enough, $379. Let's try it. Let's choose something else. Um, BR33-8 is $125. There you have it. It's working. Cool thing about match. Now with VLOOKUP, you either put comma true or comma false. The comma zero in the match says we want an exact match. The, uh, there's two other options though. You can put a one or a negative one and that says, hey, if the data is sorted, then I want the value just below it or just above it in case there's not an exact match. So a little bit more uh, things you can do with match, although to be honest, every time I do it, I put comma false or comma zero because I'm always looking for the exact match. Now, uh, this is the method that I use all the time. Let's see what Mike has. We'll throw it over to Mike. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, I like this formula right here, and I'll just show you right off the bat while, why Mr. Excel is going to get the point right here. This is match. I'm going to uh, delete this and then type a comma. There's the drop down in 2007. You can do exact match. One which is less than would be, which would be just like VLOOKUP, and then match has this other option, as Mr. Excel uh, mentioned, minus one that does greater than. So total versatility with the index in match. Ah, so index match, exact match. Let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is use the lookup function equals lookup. Lookup, we still have to look up our value, comma, but look at this. Unlike the uh, VLOOKUP, which has the lookup column and then the retrieval column next to each other, you have two arguments here in the lookup. These arguments, the lookup vector, we're going to say is SKU here and comma, then we have a result vector. The great thing about both of these arguments is that they can be orientated any way. So right now we have SKU and then to the left we have our uh, retrieval column, but they could be one horizontal, one vertical, they could be any, set up any uh, orientation. I'm going to close parentheses and then enter. Now let's just go ahead and test this. Click the drop down. Oh, that's looking great. That's looking, oh, 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 oh. Now 
wow, there's a problem here. And index and match got it right, but lookup didn't. The problem is lookup only does approximate match. And if this is not sorted in ascending order, now we all know from from lookup what ascending order means. You know, when we're doing numbers, we have smallest to biggest. But this is uh these are words, these are letters. So the solution if you're allowed to sort the column, then you can use lookup. In 2007, I'm simply going to, well, there's field names at the top and rows and records. We have our little uh, database in essence. In 2007, you could just right click the field and sort, sort. And I'm going to say A to Z. Now, all the B's, all the C's, etc., in alphabetical order. Now, lookup and this uh, index match. Setup will, will return the same value every single time. So uh, lookup, great. You only have one function. If you can sort uh, your uh, lookup column, otherwise index match much more a versatile function because of that last argument. All right, uh, there's a point for Mr. Excel. All right, see you next trick. Mike, that is brilliant. You know, I love these dueling Excel podcasts because you come up with completely different ways of attacking things. I always thought that lookup uh, was just something left over from a long, long time ago. But the fact that you can have a lookup vector and a result vector, and I want to put a challenge out there to the people watching. Does anyone have a real-life example where you have a lookup vector that's vertical and a result vector that's horizontal. I'm trying to figure out a great example where I could use to show that in my seminars. That would be so cool. Now, the one other thing I need to caution you about is that lookup, because it's doing an approximate match, is going to return an answer for an item that does not exist. And I would worry about that. Now, I'm sure uh, Mike said, well, that will never happen because we have data validation here. But of course, anyone can easily override the data validation by putting a value in another cell using copy and then pasting on top of the validated cell. Uh, the index and match is going to return NA. Uh, the, the lookup, though, is going to happily return a value. So watch out for that. Also, a cool little trick there. If you have spreadsheets where someone has used data validation, you now know how to very easily uh, override that. Not that I'm trying to get you to break anyone's spreadsheets, but sometimes, you know, just a little too harsh on you there and you really have a new item that you really have to get in that list. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. I want to thank Mike for being a part of these Dueling Excel podcasts. On behalf of Mike and myself, see you next time for another Dueling Excel.